Hello, this is part two of a series on uh, metal bending in Houdini. If you haven't seen the first video yet, then follow the link in the description and then come back here. Now I'm going to go back to the first frame and I think what I'll like to do is start dialing in these values while we're just working on this one piece of um, geometry, right? So it, you know, we can have quick iterations, kind of get this dialed in right. So right off the back, I'm going to yeah, push the sub steps up to 20. Um, we need quite a few constraint iterations when we're working with soft constraints. Um, definitely want a lot of that. Uh, don't want it to be bouncy, it's metal. And also to get that kind of sense of weight, I want these, you know, like sticking into the ground. And for that also, let's um, bump up the gravity or oh, push down. <laughs> I don't know how you'd say that. Push it to minus 20. Um, what else? Uh, Density is okay. That density only really matters when you've got different objects. So if you've got some wood and some metal, obviously then the the wood needs to be at a higher value. Um, I'm gonna push the bounce down here as well. Um, let's see what that gets us. With higher sub steps, it might struggle to break the glue constraints now. But then again, we've just okay. There we go. So we've also push the forces up but you can see now bet, um, again we're getting better kind of bending going on there um, so one thing we definitely don't want is the soft constraints from returning to the you know where they came from so if we come up here to the constraint properties okay and take a look at the soft constraints so we have this thing called damping ratio so damping is related to think about it like the springiness of the of the constraint so you know when it when a force is applied and it's pulled away then depending on the damping it will spring back to where it came from and kind of bounce back and forward like a spring you think about it kind of oscillating back and forward so the higher this value the less it behaves like a spring and more like a I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example like um, it will just stay where where it ends up. Okay, so we want to push this value up really high. Um, I don't know, just to 250 something like that. Um, what I'm going to do here, we got stiffness for the soft constraints. Okay, and this is related to the um, well, this without this being turned on, this is related to the length and also the rotation of these constraints. But if we turn this on, we're changing the angular stiffness which I want to be really low, 0.1. And then the damping also to 250, just push that up super high. So, um, you know, I want it to be able to bend very easily, but maybe I don't want it to stretch so much, you know, okay? So, you know, think about the way that the metal will behave. It's easier to bend it as it is to, than it is to, um, to stretch it. Now, you might think that we might want to use um, plasticity, which is one possibility for achieving metal looks but it's, it's quite difficult to get a nice result with it so we're going to do another trick to to um, get that sense of metal okay so let's see how that looks now if we drop simulate that again so you can see it's stiffened up quite a bit now okay but they're holding together it's still breaking um, let's see if we can uh, what could I do if we come here to the um, breaking, you see these propagation iterations? So when the glue constraint breaks, um, you know, there's a point of contact here, which is quite small. It's only along the this line here. So that's only going to contact the middle of the geometry. But, you know, naturally that, that kind of impact is going to spread out. And the uh, propagation iterations control how far that spreads out. So we can push that up to 10 to get, you know, ov obviously we don't want just a line in the middle breaking. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so, whoops, kind of hard to see, but I'm getting a bit more. You can see it's spreading all the way up there. We don't want the whole thing turning into clay. And remember that this um, container is only 10 meters high. The others, there's ones at 120 meters high, so they're going to be falling much faster. So we don't want this completely collapsing under its own weight now, okay? Um, so if we 
come here, the uh, tab abd deform pieces, we should be able to, I believe, see the result, the bending. So if I just plug this first, well, actually, no, we need to go all the way up to before we fractured the geometry and before we peaked it also. So this delete. Again, this is going to be, I'm going to be doing this a bit neater in a moment. But just to show you um, how this works. So we take into our first input the render geometry, then the constraints, constraints here, not really necessary, and then the proxy geometry. And visualize that. So that will use the simulated geometry to deform the render geometry, right? So you see that falling, hitting the bottom, and then we should see there, you see that nice subtle bit of deformation there, which looks like bent metal. Now the problem with this, this is kind of holding there, but it might, well, it probably will, um, or it can kind of continue to bend, okay, which doesn't really make sense. We only want the metal to bend when it's, um, when it's in under, you know, very extreme forces. So if we dive inside to the simulation, you can see all these green spots. And these are the soft constraints, right? If I change this to wireframe, the kind of spot, these dots are the glue constraints. Okay, so what we want is for these soft constraints to return to being glue constraints after a little bit of time. So to do that, if we go into the constraints tab here and into the breaking threshold, um, here we can do special things with the constraints. So in this case, they will break if they are um, stretched to a certain distance, okay, a distance of one, which is you know really high. But we don't want any of the constraints to break. All right, so we'll just turn that off and um, we're going to be working over the soft constraints, hard, we don't have hard constraints, they're pretty much the same as soft. We're also going to be working on the glue constraints here. I'm not going to use any of this, I'm going to go down to the vex ex expression, and we're going to be typing uh, a little bit of vex in here. So basically what we want is to check if the constraint's name is either glue or soft, and if it's soft and a certain number of frames have passed, then I want it to return to being a glue constraint. Okay, so um, we need a conditional, right? So if let's uh, we can delete these. Actually, we don't need it. So we have a conditional. If the uh, constraint name so s at constraint underscore name. Uh, is glue okay so if you are a glue constraint we're gonna do this I at timer is so I'm making this timer attribute doesn't exist. I'm creating it here. Zero. Okay, so the that basically does nothing. It just generates this attribute and it sets the value to zero. Now, if not, okay. So if we have any other constraints, in this case we don't. Um, Oh, sorry, no. Yeah, we do have soft constraints, obviously. <laughs> I add, uh, sorry, not timer, timer, um, plus plus, which will basically add one to whatever we have, okay? So if you are a glue constraint, then set the, create this attribute and set it to zero. So that will happen at the beginning on all of our constraints. And once they break, and the name is not a glue constraint, it is a soft constraint, okay, the name is soft, then it will add one to this zero, okay? So, um, we need to finish that like that. Now, if the constraint name uh, 
uh, is oops is soft. So we're looking again for the soft constraints, soft, and this timer attribute i at timer is more is more uh, than whatever value you like. I'll just do three here. So that's three frames basically. So if you are a soft constraint and you have been a soft constraint for more than three frames, that's what this is saying, then what I want you to do is become a, a glue constraint again. So asset constraint underscore name is uh, glue. Okay, and s at sorry s at next underscore underscore sorry constraint. I'll explain all this again in a moment once we're done. Underscore name Oops. is soft. Okay, and then we also need a strength as well for that glue that we've just created. Um, I think by default it will go back to whatever you set it to before, but it's handy to be able to change it. Uh, strength is 10,000, which is the same as what we had before. And that's it. Okay, so no errors yet there okay so if we dive inside we're not getting any error messages so seems like everything here is fine for the moment so what we're doing is we're checking if the constraint name okay is glue so if we take a look at what comes out of this constraint properties here in the geometry spreadsheet we have lots of attributes but what's important to us is this constraint name and at the beginning they're all glue constraints okay um they don't have a type um and they also have a next constraint name so that means when they break turn into a soft constraint okay so then inside the simulation if you are a glue constraint set that this timer attributes which we're inventing here creating declaring and set it to zero um i should tidy this up okay if you're not a glue constraint and you have already broken and you are a soft constraint so it just means if not if you're not glue, then you have to be a soft constraint. Then add one onto this timer attribute, which you already have. Okay, so that means whenever the soft constraints are generated, timer will become one on the first frame, and then two on the second frame. We're adding one onto whatever attribute we are. This is plus plus is add one to whatever the attribute is. <clears throat> okay. Then once you are a soft constraint and this timer attribute here is more than three then I want you to change back into a glue constraint and your next constraint name which is you know doing the same thing as what we're doing here basically we're doing every all of this in the simulation not all of it but you know the important parts we're changing it back to a glue constraint the next when if that breaks again so you know we can break turn into a glue constraint and then that can break again and so the process can continue as long as you want and setting the strength so you can change this strength you could even change you know change it into a different type of constraint if you wanted um, but we don't need to do that here so crossing fingers let's see if that works for us so uh, I'm gonna go inside so we can see them the constraints changing should see a drop breaking oh and we've got a disaster so let's see why that is let's go back all right i see the mistake now is kind of a typical uh, rookie mistake here in the middle so when we are um, checking if it's a conditional we need two equals max okay so this is checking if you are glue and if you are soft if it's just one then we're assigning that attribute that name to this attribute okay so it needs two of those there now it should work fine also what i'm going to do is dive inside here so then we can see the actual constraints changing so we'll come down 
break and then when they're all green these are soft constraints now and then we get three uh, frames and it'll all change back to glue constraints and now this will hold that shape without plasticity but it can be broken again when, when more um, containers fall on top of this it can break again you can see that continue to break and that bit's even breaking again there as well so now that we got that system working let's go back to the first frame I'm going to come back out here. One thing I'm going to do in here before I forget, go into the advanced tab and into the bullet solver. Something I'd like to turn on, um, randomizing the constraint order. All I will do, it will, it can, as you can see, um, will um, make the uh, simulation more stable, but it can uh, make it, it says it incurs a minor performance hit, so it could take a bit longer, but um, it's just something I'd like to turn on especially when working with soft constraints and breaking and things so um yeah we need to bring in the rest of the uh geometry so i'm going to move this up out the way here so what i want to do is iterate oops um iterate over each piece of geometry here and then go through this process not the simulation obviously but go through um the vdb thing for, for each one. So I'm going to drop a for each named primitive. Okay, and we've already got that name attribute on the primitives here, so that will work fine. And then I'm going to get rid of this delete, plug these into here, and then what we'll do is drop a RBD um, pack, which will give us one. Um, one output which allows us to use a for each loop so pack it in there and I'm gonna leave the constraint properties above um, you could put them on the inside but it's just something you might want to tweak so you don't want to be going through the for each loop each time so I'm gonna do the convert constraints in there into the pack okay and then um, RBD unpack which will give us our three outputs again, and then the constraints will go from there. Just like that. Oh, and then just cut this, and there we go. Now we have our for each loop set up, but there is something that we need to do in here. Okay, let's just tidy this up a little bit, like that. So, if we try and find one of the other other pieces of geometry, maybe if I press, where are they? they've disappeared all of them for some reason. What's going on? Oh, oh, I've cut them somehow. What's going on there? Let me just uh, connect all these up again. I don't know what's happened there. Let's just visualize that one. Some kind of weird error. There we go. Oh, yeah, we should have seven, one, two, th yeah. Okay, there we go. We have our containers. Now I just want to grab one of the other containers to see how that looks going through. So let's just take the small one. Another way of deleting, so you could do that deleting by you know in your space you could do it by 3d connectivity but if i do it by name i can just easily kind of grab one of the yeah, that's not working for some reason press nine nine again do it by oh because it's on the points i think if we come down here to where it's on the primitives now yeah i can select that press delete and delete non-selected there we go i'm going to put this back to smooth wire shaded okay and then let's follow it through this process so we pick it out make a vdb and convert that vdb okay now if i dive inside you'll see a problem there so this is the inside of that of the polygons so we don't have three-dimensional walls here right so which is no good when we um fracture this well i could just show you We'll have solid geometry with pieces going all the way through, which is no good. You see, we've got pieces going all the way through that geometry. Another way to check if we do an exploded view on this. Let's see. 
got pieces all the way through, which I don't want. So um, to fix that, what I'm going to do is we need to split these pieces of geometry. Okay, I'm going to put this above here. So just after the we got that name attribute again. Okay, um, because it's all of the pieces of geometry. So um, there's only one which is different. All of the others, they will need to be split away. Oh, that one. So all of these, they will have to be split. Okay. So we'll have to get this name. Yeah, container one, container two, and container five will have to be split to the other side, basically. Okay. So if we come into this split and say at name is star well we don't need the star at the start actually but I always leave it there anyway so star means anything anything before or after container um, what did I say I've forgotten already let's put a space and then star um, so it's these ones yeah one one two and five one put a space two control v and five oops okay that will split them over to the side so if we visualize this now so if i do that and then invert it oh. there we go um i just lost the main place so space bar on f and you'll come back to it also, sometimes with for each loops, it's a good idea to just click this um, reset cache pass. So that's just going to send everything round again. There's one at the top and one at the bottom here as well. Uh, can get rid of that. So, um, so what this means? Whoops! What this means is um, all of these containers will go this way because I've inverted it, and the others. So these ones will come this way, and we'll do something special to them. So I'm going to drop a bound here the side let me give myself some more space I'm pressing escape because it's trying to run the uh, the fracture there which takes a bit of time so bound will just drop a box over the top and then I'm going to change the padding by 0.2 just to make it a little bit smaller and then make sure we orient the box as well it won't affect it now because we haven't got any um, transforms but uh, we don't have any rotation but um oh well i can show you no we won't bother yet um once these are rotated we need the boxes to rotate with the shape of our geometry now i'm going to just subdivide this so we've got it's probably not necessary but um i like to just have so that it's not round i want it to stay square change it to bilinear okay give it some more uh, geometry I'm going to reverse this because this is going to be the inside of our boxes. If you remember, we were looking here, and the inside of this is uh, blue because that's the back of the polygon. We want our box to be to back onto this, so when we're inside the box, we've got the inside of this geometry, which is kind of may sound a bit confusing, but so that's where this is the inside of our container right and then the blue faces will face each other um, and then here we've probably lost that name attribute again yeah you can see this oh do we have it no okay so we need to copy that across again I should be copy and the oh, plug that in there and then that's the name attribute again Okay, so we've got that, and then we can just merge all of these together. All right, so drop a merge down here. Give us a oops, we need to stretch this out a bit more. There we go. So we're going to have these. these two together so if we go back into our scene view 
now we have an inside to our geometry okay and when we fracture it we won't have geometry going all the way through and then whenever this for each loop goes round and it comes out of this side we just want it to go basically bypassing all of this and go through into the fracture so we can just merge them all together okay and then if we take a look at that fracture go inside we'll see we've got them we've got a nice uh, more realistic geometry now so that's great so we're getting close to being pretty much done now um, this will take a bit of time to run through all of them you can see just doing the one cutting and you know doing all this uh, creating vdbs and everything poly reduce all of that takes a bit of time so going through um, all seven will take quite a bit of time and then once they're ready we can this is all ready to go and we can cache it out or just run a flipbook um, let me come up here first and what i'm going to do is just um go through all of these transforms and obviously we don't want them just stacked up perfectly above each other but i think for this part of the video i'll, I'll just um i'll probably play it in fast forward because i'm literally just typing in numbers here um you know just kind of tweaking the, the rotation and the translate but you know i'll just kind of hold it for a bit so you can copy the values in it if you want to have it exactly the same but i um suggest that you play around with different values do your own thing have more or less uh, you know different geometry whatever you like but it's just so that we've got um you know a nice result at the end i'm gonna just go through all these now There we are. So I've just got these kind of, it's basically they're just randomly kind of rotated there. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and copy these values in if, again, if you want them to be exactly the same. So there's container one. Um, they've just got, um, I've only changed the translation in X or Z and then the rotations as well. So container two there, container three, uh, number four number five number six and number seven so just you know you'll have to pause the video there if you want to copy them in exactly um so now uh, we'll want to get rid of that okay so that we go over each and every um, box here and then one thing we need to change in here so this third input um, we want to be the render geometry so we're going to come right to the top and then plug that into this third input and to tidy it up we can just press alt quick and just create this kind of elbowy thing and another one out there okay and then let's go to the bottom here if i visualize this this will run through seven times so it'll take a bit of time and then we'll cache it out maybe let's make that no we'll we'll run through it first there we go so that's all <coughs> excuse me that's all run through um we can Drop a file cache here, which will be an easy way to save it all. So it's all packed together in there. Okay, so we just go to save current frame, save it into our geometry folder. That's fine. Um, or we could make another folder, call it cache. Let's do that. And let's just call this um, sim geo and then it's going to be a video folder and that's it we don't need a dollar f you know we're only saving one frame so save that to disk make sure we check load from disk on so there every time whenever you open houdini it's not going to have to run through this again obviously if you make changes above change these transforms or the geometry or anything you'll have to uh, save this again um, now we can go ahead and simulate so let's go down here to the bottom Uh, one thing we might want to do is not actually necessary, but drop an abd configure just before. So the abd configure will pack all of your geometry and also um, attach any other simulation attributes that you want to add on. So, you know, change, making things active or inactive. If you have animated geometry, um, change the kind of physical attributes. Yeah, so density, bounce and things like that. Okay. 
Uh, one thing I might do is just put the bounce down a bit to so 0.1 so you know we don't want it bouncing too much um, and then so if we simulate this now so this is going to be if we look if we visualize this um, this is packed now so that's why we don't see the uh, uh, the polygon so if you press D and then go into uh, where is it? Geometry and then wire over pack geometry. You can see this is our actual render geometry. So this is going to simulate this geometry and then transform it this geometry, okay? Which doesn't really make sense. So it's going to do kind of weird stuff. It's not going to be deforming and behaving correctly, right? So you can see that we've got kind of points coming down and it, Yes, these are the constraints actually, and it's not really working. So what we do is just put that back to the start. I'm going to connect this in here. This is purely for visualization. It doesn't affect the simulation at all. And then connect this up down here. Now we can watch the simulation from this point, and then watch the deformation from this point, right? So we've got our render geometry there, and the simulation geometry going on here. And then if you like, you can cache it down here. So let's drop a null down here. Okay. Maybe what we could do, actually, we will cache this. So I'll drop an abd io. Okay. And then plug the geometry in there. Constraints, they're not really necessary, but why not? Just so it looks a bit tidier, really. Okay. Do that like that, and then this will go, sorry, no, this will go like that, actually. Okay, and I'm going to change this to geometry and points. All right, and that is angry, oh, sorry, these simulation points, there we go. Okay, so actually we don't need all of this. And we won't have constraints coming from there. We'll just have this geometry going in there. So we're not going to save the geometry. So we don't have that error now. So basically, yeah, we're, oh, we're, the cache that we're saving will just be the point. So this is really a um, light way of saving geometry. You've just got points with some a few attributes on there. So it's really quick. Um, and in terms of your of memory, it doesn't take up a lot of memory to, to save. Okay. So I'm going to do like 100 and... Just 100 frames, I think, is enough. And, okay, we're going to save this into that cache folder that we just made. And this is going to be the, uh, let's call it container sim. And then it's going to be $f3. We could put a version as well if you're doing more than one simulation. Dot version 1, $f3, dot bgeo, and then I'm going to copy all of that, paste it here into my rest geometry, so we're taking rest geometry in the first input, so that's just the static um, geometry without, it's not going to be simulated on, and then we use these points to move these points where they uh, transform pieces, okay? So, but here what's important is to get rid of that $f3, we just want one frame here, and let's just put rest there so I'll save that and then come here and we'll save the whole thing which will be 100 frames to disk right so let's see how that came out um, check load from disk uh, just make sure to check this uh, save from disk here as well I'm not sure if I mentioned that before let's just save that rest geometry and this will be the actual sequence right don't need that null there just get rid of that um, so yeah, load from disk, we can watch that, and then come down here. Um, I've just come down to this point of view with my camera. Uh, I'm just going to press control and click on the camera there, and that will drop a camera at this point of view. You can copy the transforms if you like. Okay, and let's jump back inside. Let's run a flipbook. Uh, press 9, I don't want to see that. Uh, I've got, you can see we've got this visualizer on. There, you can see the results there. It looks pretty cool. It's going to smooth shaded. Um, if 
for size and then I'm gonna run a flipbook with 100 frames uh, we can probably go from the 10th frame as we don't see any boxes for the first few frames okay okay so look at that looks great you can see so pieces falling deforming you see they become soft for a bit and then and now they're rigid again and until something else hard falls and crushes it again they hold their shape they're not kind of flopping and wobbling all over the place bends holds that shape which gives us that sense of it being um you know metal which looks really good looks cool okay so the last thing we're going to do is just add some camera shake so i'm going to visualize this um just because it's much quicker right um and let's get rid of actually yeah let me call this out render uh, but we're not going to do anything more with this but just visualize from here jump outside here and now drop a null and i parent my camera to this null and now whenever i add any transforms to this null the camera will follow okay and i'm going to call this shake so we're going to use this for camera shaking so and then i'm going to come up to the translate here right click go to motion effects and then to noise okay we'll get rid of this panel we don't need to see that now this will add an expression which will basically um, add some noise you can see we've got some values there already so if i play this now you can see it's moving kind of all over the place wildly um, but we don't want it to be so wild we've got this chop network which has contains everything all we're going to focus on is in this in the noise here the amplitude if i turn that down to zero We've got nothing, and then turn it up. And we got some movement. Okay, so basically we're just going to am animate this uh, this value. So whenever the um, containers hit the ground, then we set this to one, and then kind of trail it off. So Alt click on this to, for zero to begin with, and then go to wherever this hits the ground. So about uh, the frame before it hits twenty six. Alt click on that again and then go to the next frame set that to one alt click and then go forward a few frames about there set it to zero alt click on that and there we go let's uh we don't need so many frames here we just did up a hundred i think okay maybe i'll move this back a little so it will you can see that when the container hits we get a shake and then it'll kind of die off towards the next one so that's pretty much the pattern so we can just copy this um i think if we press ctrl c and then come forward press ctrl v we get another one so for when the next one hits there we just try and line it up so if you shift click and drag across this a middle mouse click and then you can drag it over so there we go zero and then when it hits bang we got another one and then for the next one we'll do the same so there so i'm gonna shift uh left click and drag and then Control c come over here i think if i paste it there no it won't drop it in the right place but um again uh left click drag over and bring it over let's go to that frame so one more over like that so there we get zero and then bang when it hits copy and paste that again or oh, maybe i could just press ctrl v now yeah so for the next one there it hits so i just need to bring it back one and then for that one let's do another one Just like that so oh maybe that was a bit premature yeah needs to go one more forward bang there we go and then we've got another one about there nope not yet one forward again so bang and then it goes down and then we got one more 
let's just uh, alt click and drag move around make sure you're not pressing uh, this isn't turned on because that will move the camera from where it is okay so that one hits around here it looks like there so bang that's on zero one now we need to go one more it's there there we go and that's the last one I believe yeah great so we can go back into our camera um, just to watch this quickly run another flipbook with that okay so there we get a nice adds to that sense of weight which looks great bang 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 okay and then let's just do one more uh, with the with it um, with our nice geometry maybe we can just drop a ground plane uh, just to have some oh I'm doing group not a group I need a grid and then just make this oh I need to merge these together just to have something pretty at the end to make this bigger like that oh no it's more rows we need bigger size something like that looks great and then come out here maybe we can just click on uh, skylight just give us some nice lighting I'm gonna get rid of that blue background I don't like that okay and then just hide these All right just come forward a bit so we can see oh you can see that cross there is the null um, come into full full view um, if you've got any noise, I don't think we do here. So kind of noise like that in your shadows. If you press D and then come to light and then give yourself some more. You can see that if you just look there now, we should see that smoothen out a little bit. Could add some ambient occlusion. Make sure you're on the high quality lighting mode. So that looks okay. Go ahead and you want to add materials and whatever for your rendering. You can also, if you like, add a... Um, subdivide node here okay at this point if you uh, if you like um, but I'm not going to do that go here okay and then let's run our final flipbook to see that I'm going to go a bit earlier okay. let's do 85 there we go so I'm sure you'll agree that camera shake really adds um, that sense of drama and uh, weight more than anything you know you get that sense of them being big heavy objects we got some really nice bend there so um, that's it we're all done you can go ahead and do some fancy lighting and add some uh, nice textures and you know get a nice render from this as well um, um, you can go ahead and do that yourselves and before you go I just want to introduce you to the uh, Houdini Renaissance program so if you go to the vfxschool.com and um, I want to show you our course here which is called uh, yeah then the Renaissance program this is volume two and if you'd like to learn more then I highly recommend um, signing up to this course and you can see with those f uh, four modules and in the first module is all um, related to RBD, which is, you know, just what we've been doing, but into um, a lot more detail, lots more tips and tricks. So check out this video. And um, this is a few of the things. So this is the first module where it is kind of simple. Second one, we're mixing it up a bit. We've got different materials, bending metal again. And then the final project in the final two weeks, we're doing this car project, which is um, way more complex we've got bending metal we got glass which is fracturing and bending you've got this really nice kind of um, effect on the windscreen there we've got the wheels spinning and um, suspension as well so the wheels are bouncing up and down we got pyro here um, different kinds of constraints we got um, we're layering different simulations on top of each other with these really nice um, uh, renders at the end of them as well the, we, the final project we take through to the final render and uh, compositing as well so um, yeah if you want to if you want to learn more then head over to the vfxschool.com and uh, and sign up